Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is going to be a very, very special day. Uh, actually, what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to boost the ratings a little bit. So I, I've, I've surrounded myself by two very beautiful women today. <laughs> so, no, I'm just teasing. These, these ladies right here, both of them are on fire for the Lord. This is Shirley, one of our best friends. And this is Cindy, my precious wife, who I would not be here if it not, were not for her prayers. So... Um, the year 2021. Wow, it's been a, a crazy year already. And then, you know, if we back before that year 2020, the year of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to ask, how are you making it? How are you making it through COVID? I know that uh, a lot of people, uh, there's been a lot of injured people. It's like the enemy's throwing a lot of fiery darts at us. And so how can we make it? How can we thrive in 2021? And so we've decided that the most important thing to God is our families. God, if nobody Absolutely. wants nobody wants your family to make it to heaven more than God does. He loves you and he cares about you. And so we're we're designating 2021 as the year of the family. You know, we've looked at a lot of really important things about building the family, strengthening the family for Jesus. Uh, looked at some real key looked at some uh, really key important building blocks. You know, we, we looked at prayer, uh, which is very important uh, to grow in the family. Uh, we looked at, we looked at uh, just having families that, that were dedicated, dedicating your family uh, to, to God. Ded just saying, you know what? We're all in for Jesus. We, did, we looked at that last week. And uh, this week, we're going to look at God's Word in the family. What kind of impact does God's Word have on our families? And, and so um, I want to share a scripture with you in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also uh, for, for the Greeks. The power of God. The power of God, friends, is found right in this book right here. The gospel. The gospel the gospel, yeah. the good news that God loves you, that He cares about you, is found yeah. right here in this book. Um, I was sharing a little earlier with some friends. Uh, I used to have this truck. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, a green four-wheel drive power stroke diesel. Now, really what sold me on that truck, and I didn't share this part earlier, is at that time I had a farm. I had a farm that had a green metal fence out yeah. front that had all my old McDonald's farm critters in it. You know, I had the bulls and the cows and, the, and the, all that, the fun stuff and a little donkey. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then I had a green barn. And, and at that time I raised, uh, I raised poultry for a living commercial poultry and I had these four big brewer houses and and they were all faced out green and then I had a, a house with oh, yeah, with a that. green roof on it so you understand <laughs> green was my favorite color on the farm and Cindy came Cindy came driving up one day on the, in, in this big power stroke green diesel truck and she and just said do you want to buy this truck and how could I say no? <laughs> it was the green color. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just my beautiful wife driving this truck. And if she wanted, how could I say no? But anyway, um, uh, this, this was a powerful truck. It really was. It was a power stroke diesel truck. And I was very proud of this truck because it was so powerful. Well, one day I was carrying my son to school. And I dropped him off. And I come back. And on my way back, mm -hmm. my power stroke diesel truck started cutting out, missing on me. Pulled over the side of the road, and I went, what's going to be wrong? I mean, you know, with this truck, I mean, it's a powerful, power stroke, diesel truck. I cranked on it, cranked back up, and, and so I went on home. Well, the next day, I had some short errands to run, uh, less than a mile from the house and everything. The next day, I made a longer errand, and this time, the truck started cutting out, and guess what? It died. Mm -hmm. It died on the side of the road. And so I'm going, oh, what in the world am I going to do? And he's Luckily, not a mechanic. I, not a mechanic. <laughs> not a mechanic at all. And uh, But I had a friend that was. And so I called him up. And he has this towing service. So he picked me up, my truck, and, and carried my truck to the truck hospital. And I thought, this was on a Friday. So I said, oh, you know what? I can give up. My, I'm not going to get to see my truck for a long while <laughs> and everything. An hour later, he calls me up. He said, Rick, I got your truck fixed. I said, you do? What was, what's wrong with it? And he said, he said, well, you had a, a is, you had a tank problem. 
And I went, a tank problem? What do you mean? A, oh, I, I know my fuel pump. My fuel pump is gone bad. No, that's not what it is. It's a tank problem, tank problem. He said, Rick, you're out of diesel. <laughs> you're out of fuel. Fuel. No power. I told that no power that. whatsoever. <laughs> Friends, are you running low on power right now? Is your light getting dim right now? There is power in the Word of God. Amen. Power in the Word of God. Uh, let me have a quick Amen. prayer before we go further, okay? Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you, dear God, for loving us so much that you have given us everything that we need to be uh, uh, pro uh, productive in this life. Everything we need to get through this life, you've given us in your Word. So today, Lord... There are so many people out there that are listening right now, Lord, that, that need the, the power of God in their life. Would you please encourage them through the Holy Spirit to pick up your Bible so that you can strengthen them and that you can put power in their life. Mm -hmm. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, one of my favorite scriptures in the, in the Bible is, is found in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Now listen to these words right here. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrows. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Friends, there really is power in the word of God. Yeah. Now, the reason that I have brought these two lovely ladies here to be a part of this today is not just because they make me look a lot better, uh, <laughs> but it's to share their testimony. Both of these ladies have incredible testimonies about how God is working in their life simply because they're opening up the Bible and seeking Him. So I'm going to ask Shirley mm -hmm. if, you could, if you would share for her, Shirley. Uh, why do you get up, what, 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning and spend time with Jesus? There's got to be a reason. <laughs> Well, I, I never thought I could get up that early because I thought if I got up that early, I was going to be tired during the day. And um, I thought, this isn't going to work. But when I, after I read through Morris Venden and I saw all his sermons, there's 20 of them that you could watch on YouTube. And they're on righteousness uh, by faith. In fact, I even have the book that I've read. But I've seen all his sermons. And his challenge was, you know, Spend time with Jesus every day, preferably mm -hmm. in the morning. And I think I understand why he said to spend time with mm -hmm. him in the morning because, as Rick just said, mm -hmm. we need fuel. Yeah. We need fuel for the day. We can't be reading that at night and then going to sleep. Yeah. We need to have it during the day. So yeah, absolutely. I said, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see what he's got to say. Because he says, you know, spend time, at, you know, preferably an hour in the morning mm -hmm. and then pray and then share those three things mm -hmm. and your your relationship and, and you build your relationship with Jesus so I said I'm gonna try that so you know I said I'm gonna get up at four o'clock maybe he'll want me up earlier I don't know but I usually have to go to work by 6 30 6 45 so I thought I'd have a good hour a solid hour to spend time with him and you know that four o'clock would come mm -hmm. and the thing was yeah. I mean this was a year ago I never set an alarm. Wow. Uh, I'm always up even before four o'clock. He's waking me up. And I don't, wow. when I say wow. wake up, I mean, it's like I'm wide eyed. I'm not laying there, you know, feeling like I want to hit the snooze button. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up. And, and it's just like, you know, and I go to a room that it's my, our porch that we just recently got enclosed. And I never realized this is what it was going to become, oh, but wow. it became my little haven. Where I've can, seen that porch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where she really goes, special. and Cindy and I both, we we've been there to their home, and, and uh, you've got everything laid out, and and it's like you, She's you set you're up for eager, success there. you're <laughs> eager to get up because you're 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 getting to spend time with Jesus. You're mm -hmm. going to spend time with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yeah. yeah, and so it also faces the east side, and so we, in, I can start reading. My ideal thing is to be up there before the sun rises, so I can already be in a good Mm. read and be in a relationship and then you know kind of toward the end that's when I can sit back and watch that sunrise and I don't always get it because I have to go to work before the sun comes up but, <laughs> but when I do I try to just I'm out there for the long way because I am going to yeah. see that sunrise praise God Amen. praise but, the Lord you know spending time and then 
you know, this is just, and I don't want to say it habit, and it's not something I'm going to check off on my little to-do list, mm -hmm. where I think before, that's what it was. I felt like, you know, I got to read, you know, a couple of devotional books, right. you know, read a scripture, kind of get it in my brain and have my hand on the door, walk mm -hmm. out the house, walk outside, get in my car. And then I say, oh, I'll talk to Jesus on my way to work. I got mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Uh -huh. Radio's down. Don't listen to that. And I'm going to talk to Jesus. And it's like, no, this isn't the same thing. This mm -hmm. is, you know, I want to spend a solid hour. I want to, and the thing is, the more time you spend, the more time you want. That's right. Yeah. I, I find myself being out there, you know, on the weekend, and I used to always say, "Oh, I don't, you know." I talk. I was talking to Rosalind after church, and I just said we were talking about this. I mean, she was understanding it too, but I said, you know, on Sabbath, I'm, yeah, I'm going to get plenty of Jesus. You know, we're going to go to church. <laughs> I'll have plenty of Jesus. I don't have to get up for that. You Jesus know, Christ hour field. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, that doesn't stop then. Four o'clock, I gotta get up. I mean, it's just like Praise I gotta, I gotta spend that time with him. So you spent time with Jesus this morning. Mm -hmm. Praise yeah. God. Yes. 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 Yeah. I can't. I can't miss out. And if I do, which there has been, I, I know there's been a couple of times because I've been on call, and they've called me in like at four thirty, four o'clock, oh. and so it's like I'm missing out, and I, it's an empty feeling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not saying that God isn't with me, but it's like I gotta have. Something, I've got to read something. And yeah. the most powerful thing is reading about Jesus being here on earth. Amen. 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 There's something about, I read through Luke, and that was kind of like a little assignment you had yeah. to do yeah. in December. Yeah. But I was reading The Desire of Ages ever since I started this a year ago. Uh -huh. I wanted to get through The Desire of Ages. And, you know, I've read Desire of Ages before. Um, I was in a really, 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 really black hole mm. <laughs> years ago. And, uh, you know, that was an assignment that we had from a pastor who was um, helping me and Jay through some counseling. And he said, read the Desire of Ages. And I read it. Yeah. And, you know, it must have helped. I, things, things were good. <laughs> but I'm just saying this clicked a little bit different. And I don't know why. I do know why. I think that the more mm -hmm. we read about Jesus and his life here on earth and what he's done for us, yeah. the more... We want to give back to him and mm -hmm. say, thank you, thank you, thank you. What can mm -hmm. I do for mm -hmm. you? Yes. And, you know, that... That's a good point. Going to church, not that I feel like going to church is hard for me to do, but the Sabbath day, I look at the Sabbath day even more as a, hmm, a special day. I've never felt like that before. Mm -hmm. Like, I really want to do it for Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah. all, my motives yeah. are all different. My motives for doing oh, yeah. things. You want to bring honor to him. Yes. Yeah. And, and I look at, I'm looking at people different. You know, it's just like, I see people and, you know, I, I want to, I want to share Jesus with them. If, mm. you know, they're hurting, you know, at work or something might come into my mind and I'll say, uh, you need to go do something. Call some, this person up. It's like, I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. I never, I don't want to put it on the yeah. back don't burner. Want to delay. Uh -huh. Because I really feel like it's the Holy Spirit talking. Wow. I feel like and we need to tune in to what he's saying. If we are asking for him to come in. And I just want to say, there's a text that I'm into this Barry Black thing, which we showed a clip at the church. Tell us who Barry Black is. Barry Black is the 62nd chaplain for the Senate at the Capitol. And he's been there since 2003. Mm. Uh, he was a Navy chaplain for 30 years before he's that. He's an admiral. Admiral. Yeah. Wow. And so he... And he has an amazing story about, you know, coming to Jesus. Um, he's got a book. And in fact, I didn't bring it, but it's from, it's called From the Hood to the Hill. Mm. And it talks about his walk with Jesus. But he lives it. He walks it. He talks it. He's a powerful man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can I say something here mm -hmm. that I know about Barry Black? Uh, every day on his way from his home to, to, to the White House, he listens to the Bible. That's what he does. He goes through the Bible. Yeah, I think he's like 45 minutes a day. So he's listening to the Bible every day. He he wow. puts the Word of God in him. And one thing that I've seen him do, mm -hmm. and I'm on a, a group that uh, that meets every day in North America, and he usually comes on about once a month and just shares with us mm -hmm. something and, and is part of our team. And uh, he... He, uh, one thing that amazes me about this man is how he takes the Bible here. Mm -hmm. He says the Bible is not just to be read, it's to be prayed. 
he prays back the word of God. Wow. Uh, it, he, he's doing all that. kind of Bible studies with people right now that's in the Senate too. Wow. I mean, he's really Powerful. a man of God. So yes. it shows by the way he lives his life. Yes. Well, he pointed out, I've watched several of his sermons on YouTube, and I encourage you to go to YouTube. And, you know, we, we'd like to pick on these phones and say they take so much of our time and, you know, Facebook, but there is some good with this technology. And that is we can zoom in on, like, Morris Vinden, who is not here anymore. I mean, he passed away in 2013. And, boy, mm. I just know that if he was alive today, I'd buy him a ticket I would feed him. I would house him for a week or two weeks to come here and be a, be here in Gentry. He, yes. His book is so proud. It has changed my life. And, you know, and what does he say? I just want to say that he says it's not about what we do. Mm -hmm. It's not about our behavior. It's about who mm -hmm. we know. That's right. And having a relationship and, with and him. Who and know. who we know would change mm -hmm. what we do. Yes. Amen. And so, um, but this... Going back to Barry Black, there's a there's a text a text that he always talks about that he said he prays that text every day and it's in Luke eleven thirteen and it says that even though us being evil, we want to give or having a sinful nature, we want to give all the good gifts to our children. Yes. And how much more does God want right. to give the Holy Spirit to us when we ask for it. Amen. And he prays that. He says, we need to be um, with gusto. We need mm. to pray that prayer every day. And you know, and that's what I pray. I want, I want the Holy Spirit to be in my yes. life. I want him to be talking to me. And I don't want to squelch him when he says, uh, you need to call someone. Mm -hmm. That just pops in my mind. Or, you know, just go and pray with that person. They seem, you know, you know, whether they know, you know, I don't, you don't want to get into their... As a nurse with a patient, I don't want to, you know, make him feel bad or anything. But I, I try to just ask him, would you like me to pray with you before, you know, you go into right. surgery? And, and normally they, they say, yeah. yes, it's fine. You know, they would yeah. love it. Um, You're like an angel to But you got to, I feel like you got to get in touch. You got to know there's this voice talking to you. And, and you know, I think Cindy, I'm just going to put this little bit on, <laughs> this little advertisement in on this book. But that's what Cindy, mm -hmm. I saw her relationship that she created with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, when I read that, I just said, ooh, I, that's, I want that relationship with mm -hmm. Jesus. Praise God. I want to be in tune with what he's saying. Praise yeah. God. And that was kind of the start of me starting to search a little bit deeper. Praise God. Well, praise God for that. Yeah. You've seen the miracle that God worked in this scandal right here, didn't you? <laughs> she, she read this book right here, Pray Big. <laughs> and, and you know what? God did work a miracle. He yes. worked a miracle in our life. And she was doing the very same thing, Shirley. She was getting up in the morning at 4 and 4.30 in the morning, opening up the Bible and just seeking God with mm -hmm. her whole heart. And I want you to know, friends, when you open up the Bible and you seek God with your whole heart, you will find Him. Amen. Matter of fact, He tells us that in Jeremiah chapter 29, in verse 11 through 13, He says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of peace right. uh, and, 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 and hope in a future. He's got a plan for our life, He's telling us. And He will reveal that plan when we come to Him in prayer and when we seek Him with our whole heart. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, seeking Him with our whole heart. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. Anything else, Shirley? Oh, there's lots. Okay, probably lots of <laughs> more. But that's okay, let's go I'm on. I'm going to let Cindy talk go for a while. Ahead. And you, if you think of something else, you please you you share it. Okay, I'll give you, at the I'm end, not going to stop hey, you. At the end, probably what I'll do is I'll give you a wrap-up talk okay. and everything okay. like that. Sure. So now, sure. this little lady right here, like I said, I would not be here if it were not for her. She knows the miracle that God can work in someone's life when you seek Him your whole heart and you claim these promises in the Bible right here. Amen, amen. Well, I tell you, um, I'm not going to recap a whole lot of what some people already know, but um, it, just like Shirley, I, you know, I had this this moment, this something I, I could not deny when when I knew that God was, you know, you can't deny that tug that on your heart, and so I'm I'm, I'm diving in to God's word, but you know, albeit I was diving in, I had an ulterior motive, you know, I. 
I was thinking she was like, married to a scoundrel. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Lord, I'm going to do this thing that you're asking me to do, but please change my husband, you know. And if any of you know me very uh, well or been around me very long, you will know that um, quite, yes, that did happen. Ultimately, you know that. But the biggest thing was the change yeah. in me. And it always makes me think of that song, Ancient Words, Ever True. Yeah. Changing me, changing you. Yes, yeah, beautiful song. And uh, I was just sharing with a, a young lady that I got the opportunity to meet today from um, Ozark Academy. And uh, I, I told her, I, I, I said, look, I said, when you spend time with God in his word, it can't help but change you. That's right. Amen. I mean, it, it's kind of a, it's a simple equation. If you don't spend the time, if, and, and if you, it's not like you have to do it. It's not like a checkoff thing. It's well, just you, you know, want to do it. You're spending time with God. Yes, you're spending time you're with Him, uh, God's Word. And and I said, but if you don't do that, I said, you're just, there's not going to be a change. But yeah. when you do make that choice, that 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 um, you're just going to nothing else. You got to mark everything off, and and you've got to say no. This time is for for God. I mean, you know, Shirley, you can easily you let other too. things get in the way. Mm -hmm. All of us can. But when you say, no, this time belongs to God, I've carved it out, I'm going to meet the, it, it has to change you. And so, obviously, it changed me, it changed him, it changed mm -hmm. us, yeah. you know, ripple effect. But I will tell you the one thing that it did for me that I did not expect, I, I didn't see this coming, um, was that it created such a huge overwhelming desire and passion to yeah. share it with other people that's right and i thought oh i can't do that i mean i mean <laughs> you know, i'm not equipped to do that you know what none of us are but he equips us mm -hmm. when when we say yes to something he's putting on our heart we don't have to understand a through z every detail of it we just have to say here i am lord send me yeah. and he will and um, I, Isaiah 40, verse 8, um, I love this verse, verse. It says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God does, does what? It stands, stands forever. Forever. So our lives change. Things happen. Events come into our life. We have tragedies. We have triumphs. You know, all around. But the one thing that remains the same all the time, 100%, is his word and that's what we have to stand on and that's what's going to get us through you asked how are we doing at the beginning of the program yeah. and i joke a little bit i don't know if this is appropriate i may get asked to not come back on the show but um i say uh Do we need well to have a time <laughs> <laughs> i say i'm doing all right i'm hanging in there like a loose tooth you know um Honestly, it's been a challenge yeah. for many people, many different mm -hmm. reasons. But I will tell you, the only thing that's going to sustain us, that's going to keep us strong, is exactly what uh, Shirley's doing. It's it's us connecting with Him. It's letting Him change us, and then letting us share it with others. And I have some more to share about that. Yeah. But if you no, want please, to say no, please do no, do share. Um, so. You know, recently, uh, without sh uh, sharing any names, because I did not get permission, uh, recently uh, a couple wanted, they actually, I'll just be honest with you, they've been begging. Now, when's the last time that you had someone beg you yeah. to share the Word of God with them? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, begging for quite some time. And I'll be honest, I, I've had a lot of things that just kind of kept pushing back, pushing back that can I say this too? Because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that's going to listen to what Cindy's sharing here and you're going to go, you know, I've got this friend or that friend mm -hmm. that I could share with. But I'll tell you what happens. The devil gets us busy. Oh, he gets us amen. so busy yeah. because he don't want us sharing the Word of God with other people. But in addition to the busyness, he'll say, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or how do you think you're going to be able to explain this in the Bible. Well, I can tell you, I can't, but I've got God's Word. That's right. <laughs> and I'm going to share that. And it's His Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that does the convicting. It's His Holy Spirit that it helps me to teach something that I don't fully understand. So I, you can, all the excuses that you have, I've had them and yes. a million more. And just go ahead and move God on can take out. care of every one of them. <laughs> but anyway, um, so finally, 
the opportunity came so that I could go and, and meet with this couple and I took some friends along with me and uh, we get there and it wasn't just the husband and wife. It was, she says, I hope you don't mind, but uh, my mom wants to join in too. Oh, okay, great, you know, wonderful. And we've been meeting and meeting. The weather kind of delayed us a few weeks. We have a lot of snow. And then I go uh, recently this past week and they brought their daughter, invited their daughter over. And I said, how many chairs have you got? She said, I got plenty. And I'm like, good, because let's just spread this table out. <laughs> you know why they're coming? Because they're excited. Yeah. They're excited at what God's Word can do, what, yeah. what they uh, know the potential is there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I just say that whatever, whatever God's putting on your heart, if there's someone He's been tugging, just go ahead and give up because He's going to keep pursuing you until yeah. you say, okay. And, uh, you know, time is short. It really yeah. is. Amen. And I believe that this enthusiasm, I mean, there's always been enthusiasm for God's Word, but I have actually seen it in a lot of people this past yeah. year. And that's a good thing. That's a yeah. really good Amen. thing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This Word here, the Bible, has is, is got dynamite power. It really is. That, that's where that's that power stroke diesel. Uh, it needed the fuel, right? Jesus says, the Word that I speak or, or Spirit in their life. This is the living word of God right Amen. here. This word is powerful. Like I, I read earlier, it's, it's, it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit mm -hmm. and, and joints and marrow. I know where I was at before uh, the word of God, before I started partaking of the word of God, before I started filling myself up with the word of God. Friends, I really was. I was a slave to drugs. I was a slave to alcohol. I was a slave to lust. I was a slave to, I could go, I could just keep on and on and on naming these things. The, the devil was trying to destroy me. The word of God changed my life. And I know you've got somebody out there. You've got a friend or family member uh, that, that you can probably think of right now. That's life, the candle's gone out. There's just really no hope in them. There's no spark in their life. Friends, they need the word of God. They need the fuel of the word of God. And if you're just willing, God wants to use you just to, to share. A, 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 I shared earlier today, you know, God's not called me to be a preacher. He's called me to be a witness. I just mm -hmm. share with others what God is doing in my mm -hmm. life. Um, I know for a fact, Shirley, that uh, Shirley and her husband also, they have a, a group that comes over uh, once a week and studies them. And I know your husband has something on Monday morning, really, really early Monday mornings, uh, a Bible study group. Uh, that they just take their time and to open up the Bible in their homes. And it, it's making Amen. a difference in y'all's life, I know, because they, they're on fire for Jesus right Amen. now. So, um, sharing um, is powerful. It really sharing, is. I think it's, you know, in the Bible, you, you've, got the, you've got the Sea of Galilee, and you've got the, uh, the, 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 what they call it, the Dead Sea. The Dead mm -hmm. Sea. Both of them are fed by the Jordan. Am I correct on that? I think both of them are fed. Both of them have all this water coming in. Uh, but but the Sea of Galilee is full of life, mm -hmm. and we read about that a lot in Scripture. That's where Jesus was fishing at, and everything with his uh, all the, the Peter, James, and John. And then, but but then you got the Dead Sea. You know how much life is in the Dead Sea? Hmm. Zero. Zero. It's the Dead Zero. Sea. You know the difference between the Dead Sea and Sea yeah. of Galilee? There's really only one difference. There's no outflow of water. The, the, the Sea of Galilee, it, water comes in, water goes out. The Sea of the, the Dead Sea, nothing. Yeah. There, you can take and take in and take in, but if you're not giving anything out, yeah. then, then, then you're just I'm, dead. I'm glad that you brought that up because honestly, um, you know, we can't share anything that we don't have. That's right. Or, you know, I can't tell you, I know what you're going through if I haven't had that experience, so to speak. And, and it really is important that we continually fill our cups so yeah. that they're spilling over and splashing out on everyone. We want to, we, we want it just to flow out. But mm -hmm. if it's, if it's just like here, I'm not going to be able to spill yeah. and splash God's word on yeah. you. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Cindy brought up a really good point here that I think that I hope we all take note of. One of the devil's biggest deceptions mm -hmm. is is that and the reason we don't witness to others more than what we do about the Word of God is because we are afraid 
that we don't know enough. Right. We're afraid that somebody's going to ask us a question that we don't, that we don't know for. that we yeah. don't have an answer to. Yep. And I think we me. could, every one of us, raise our hand <laughs> on that. And I know me, uh, that was a big one in my, I said, oh, how can I get up in front of and mm. share? You know what? If, if we just share... The first time I got up in front of someone to share, uh, a yeah, friend of mine, that. Dr. Ferdy Samuel, mm -hmm. said, uh, I was telling him, I'm afraid I'm going to freeze up and I'm not going to be able to say <laughs> anything. And he <laughs> said, "He said, Rick, you just get up and share what Jesus is doing in your life. And and Cindy, I tell you. He hasn't. He hasn't. Well. I haven't shut up yeah. since. Because <laughs> just share what Jesus I've is doing known. in your life. Just be a, be a witness. Be a witness of what he's doing you in your know. life. God's not called any of us to no, be theologians right. or know-it-all. I want to tell you something. Nobody likes a know-it-all anyway. That's true. <laughs> they don't. They'd rather have somebody honest and just that's just naturally a overflowing seeker. with Jesus. Just seeking. I'm just Jesus. seeking truth. I don't know it all. Exactly. I just want to know more about Jesus, more about Jesus absolutely, and, and everything. Well, and, and too, I, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, not going to let everybody off the hook here, but honestly, sharing the good, the gospel, which is the good news, yes. it's, it's not really even just a, um, a suggestion, could I say, mm -hmm. because I just want to share um, Matthew 28, you may be familiar with it. Yeah. 19 through 20, it it's says, Jesus go, talking. he says, go therefore go. and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end so, of the age. So Cindy, if, if I read that right, and surely we heard that right, Jesus promises us, if we right. just dare, if we had the courage... courage. To, sh to let our light shine to someone else that Jesus is with us when we do that. Is that the way I understood that That's scripture? That's the way I take it yes. in my yeah. own experience is that he has shown favor upon favor. He has equipped me. He's gave me words I really did not even... Amen. I was like, that did not come yeah. from me. It comes from the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. I would not be here today, but somebody probably just like you come up to me one day and mm -hmm. ask me something that I have no I was 40 years old yep. and nobody had ever asked me would you like to study the bible mm -hmm. I said and yes what would you say I said yes praise the lord <laughs> I said yes and I'm here today as mm -hmm. I fill my life with the word of god as I fill my life with Jesus because that's what you're doing mm -hmm. you're you're this is rocket fuel this is Jesus here this this is holy mm -hmm. scriptures we should tremble when we read the Word of God. Yeah. When you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, surely you, you, you should tremble as you, as you open up the Word of God. These words are, are ancient words. They're, they're holy words. They're, they're, they're the living Word, the breath of God. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful this book is. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people you know, have this thing, and I know people, and you probably do too, they, they, they read the Bible every year, or they try, right. you know, they, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, like they brag on it. Yeah, I read the end. Bible. I read and the I Bible. It's a it is good. Thing. And, it, and I think it's a good thing to go through the Bible. But you know what's more important than that? Is let the Bible to get through to you. Mm -hmm. You know, friends, I want you to know, you might not be a perfect person, parent or perfect Christian, but you can be a, 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 mm. a but you can be a person that that's a praying Christian. You can be a person that's seeking God. And if you seek him, it's up to him to do everything else. If you open up the word of God and you're seeking him, it's up to, to him right. to transform you. And that's and right. he and he will and he will do that. Amen. So um Amen. Wow, where's our time went? It just kind of flew by. Fun. It flew by. I want. Is there any final thing that either one of you would like to say about the impact that the Word of God has on your life, or sharing the Word of God has has had on your life? Well, I just want to say that I'm sure all of us have felt this way. That if we meet with Jesus and we spend time with Him and we go to church and uh, you know we pay our tithe and we open up our Bible, that life is going to be smooth. Mm. That sounds nice. Life is not going to be smooth. <laughs> and this is why I think it's so important mm. that we we get all our ammunition now. Yes. When we get get what we need so we when we go out mm. into this world which Amen. there we're not promised a, a smooth going. 
Um, and this one verse really gets to me, uh, Hebrews 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, mm. patient in tribulation. That's where I want to be. Patient yeah. in tribulation. When things get rocky, be patient and continually, continuing instantly in prayer. Mm. We need to be that way at all Amen. times. And just know that, you know, just because we're spending time with God, it's... It, it, it's it's that we're just getting fueled up. So when things get That's rocky, right. we have it. We're okay. We know God's in control and it's okay. And, and, and his, his word will not return void. In other words, there is time spent in God's word is time well spent. Amen. And, you know, he, he could have chosen a lot of avenues, a lot of conduits to share his word. But who did he choose to share his gospel? Nice. He chose us, and that is an honor upon honor, yeah. a privilege upon privilege. And I just want to, I just want to say um, to those listening, I encourage you to not delay to spend that time in His Word and look for whom you can share it with. It will Amen. change your life, and it will change that person's life Amen. as well. Amen. All of us want to make it to the Promised Land, right? Amen. Amen. Every single one of us. Nobody wants and our you to and make it, too. and your family to make it more yeah. than God does. He wants you to make it. And he's given us some instructions uh, all throughout the Bible. But I got some very specific tr uh, instructions I want to close with. Joshua. You know, remember Joshua? Uh, he, he took over after Moses, right? He took after over after Moses and led the mm -hmm. people into the promised land, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And God gave him some simple instructions. Mm -hmm. You know, when they were they were getting ready to take the promised land and going into this new country where they were they were going to be facing these warlike people and everything mm -hmm. like that, he said, "This is how you're going to take the promised land. This is how you're going to do it, Joshua." And he says in Joshua chapter one. And you can read Joshua chapter 1 maybe this afternoon. But I'm just going to read verses 8 and 9 maybe here. He says, This book of the law, the book, the Bible, um, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, mm -hmm. and that, it may, it's that you may observe to do everything that is written here in this Bible. And, and if you do that, it will make your way prosperous yeah. and you will have success. Now, God could have said, I want, you to, I want you to prepare for war, Joshua. I want you to train your soldiers. I want you to sharpen your arrows and your swords for war. That's not what he said. He says, I want you to meditate on Amen. the word of God Amen. day and night. Let this be your meat. Let this be your breath. Let this, don't go to the left or the right that you may observe to do it. Right here is our instruction book, Amen. the Bible. <laughs> B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. This is how we're <laughs> going to do it, friends. This is how we're going to win the promised land. Friends, God has given you a message today. I hope we have just made you a little thirsty for the Word of God. And I want to thank you, Cindy and Shirley, for joining me today. I think this has been thank a you. wonderful Bible study. Will you come back on again sometime? Yes, most okay. likely. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, you're a good God, and we thank you for your precious Word that really is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for... For the, for the plans that you are coming back soon. Amen. Lord, uh, please give us a hunger and thirst after your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, friends. Thank Amen. you for joining us. Know that Jesus loves you. And he's waiting to spend time with you today. Don't Amen. delay. Get in the word. Bye-bye.